So you've got yourself a camera, you have a good understanding of filmmaking, you may even have a degree or a qualification that's video related. Some people may have got a job straight away as a camera operator or a videographer. However, some people might not be as fortunate. Working as a freelancer might not quite be working out, or you realize that finding a job as a videographer is extremely competitive. Now what you need is the upper hand. And so in this video, I'm going to give you five tips on why you should consider wedding videography as a way of improving as a filmmaker. Let me just find that intro. So yeah, I want to share with you guys today why I personally think that wedding videography is a great area of filmmaking to get into to help you develop as a filmmaker. And I know there's more reasons out there, but to me, these are the most valuable skills that you'll gain from doing wedding videography that you can take into any other area of filmmaking. So let's dive straight in with number one, and that is proactive filmmaking. Although weddings typically follow a similar routine throughout the day, Many things could happen that you weren't aware of and you need to think on your feet in an instant and make sure you capture the footage. So whilst you have to make sure the settings are correct, you also need to make sure that you're framed up and ready for something that could potentially happen. Teaching yourself to always be one step ahead will prove to be so effective in your filmmaking career because you'll be naturally envisaging potential situations before they've even taken place. And with this skill, you'll be able to shoot things like documentaries because you'll always be aware of making sure your shot looks nice, but proactively thinking ahead of what could happen. Number two is relationships. Wedding videography isn't just about filming and editing videos. Half of it is to do with the relationships that you form. Before a couple inquires about having a wedding video made, the chances are they've never spoken to you before. And so within a short amount of time, you need to earn their trust and prove to them that you're the right person or business for the job. And with these relationships that I've personally formed over the years, I've developed into someone who's a lot more confident, a lot more approachable, not just as a videographer, but when it comes to making friends or talking to strangers. Next up, we have additional skills. You may be a great videographer, but with wedding videography comes a lot of other skills that you will develop more and more over time. Depending on your shooting style, you may choose to direct the bride and groom, telling them to walk from point A to point B. Before weddings, I'd never really done this. My job as a camera operator was to just shoot what I was told to shoot. But if you're a single shooter at a wedding, you're gonna have to perform multiple roles to make sure that the video is the best that it could be. I don't mean for that to sound daunting in any way whatsoever, but instead see that as an opportunity for developing these authority, authority, let me Google it, authoritative. So authoritative responsibilities that are an extremely beneficial skill set to have in your locker. You'll also learn about brand and identity. If you're just starting out as a wedding videographer, like I was, you won't want to spend much money on web design or logo design or someone looking after your social media. And so if you take the time to learn these skills and do them, you're gonna learn a heck of a lot about brand and identity. I built my own website from scratch. I even designed my own logo and several versions of the logo over the years. And so if you do the same, you're gonna have a whole catalog of these skills that will essentially save you money, but also help grow your presence in any other venture that you decide to go on, whether that's starting a business or potentially selling other skills that you've got on places like Fiverr. Quick note, wedding videography is a great way to bring in regular income each month. And apart from the COVID lockdowns going on at the minute, there won't necessarily be a huge shortage in weddings as time goes on. And so if you prove that you have the ability to produce consistently good work, you then have a base to allow yourself to learn other skills in your spare time. Number four on the list is understanding value. When you're starting out, there's no way you can charge the same amount for a wedding video as people who have got years of experience. From a customer perspective, that's because you've probably not got a portfolio to show or to match. My first weddings were the hardest to convert, and that's because I didn't have a portfolio to show them. Instead, I had to rely on how I represented myself and gaining their trust, which leads us back to point number two, which was all about relationships. As you gradually get more and more weddings under your belt, you'll begin to understand the amount of time and effort that goes into making a wedding video. And therefore you have to make sure that you find the right balance between making a comfortable living but also making sure that you're not charging too much for what your portfolio at that time is suggesting. I personally believe that if I charge something like 500 quid for my first video, I'd be putting unwanted pressure on myself to make sure that that video is worth 500 quid. Throughout it all, I made sure that I was charging a realistic representation of my ability in that industry. 
and therefore this can apply to any type of filmmaking that you get into. And finally, number five, we have free advertising. What's great with weddings is that if you make a lasting impression on that day, you'll be remembered after that. Some of the guests there might also be engaged and you might have even converted them into having a wedding video. Or that guest can go home and speak to someone who is engaged and mention your name to them. So you're effectively advertising yourself for free at any wedding that you attend. Now, although this doesn't necessarily apply to every other area of filmmaking, just having that experience of what's essentially networking will be a huge advantage. So there we have it, five tips why I personally think that you should consider shooting wedding videos to help develop yourself as a filmmaker. I hope there was some things in that video that you'll take away and consider. And until next time, take care and I'll see you very soon.